I promise I will beat any of you out there at any game hands down easily. And you know why that is? Well, first off, because I'm using a pair of open back audiophile headphones while I game. I'm also using a custom keyboard with lubed switches, lubed stabilizers, and foam dampening. But most importantly, my gaming mouse has 8,000 polling rate. And that is the product we are talking about today, the new Razer Death Adder V3 with 8,000 polling rate. And a wire? Yo, Razer! Razer, what the heck is this? 1990? Who makes wired mice these days? Well, they had to keep that wire attached right there to again get that 8,000 polar rate as we've seen with the Viper 8K before. Same performance you are going to get right here. And as you see on the back of the box, if you're into those specs, it's packing some great specs. The Gen 3 optical switches, so on and so forth. It is packing a punch again for a wired mouse. In your box, well, you get the mouse, you get a baggie, like Okay, you get it baggy. So we have a lot to cover about this mouse, even though it's the new Death Adder V3, which we all are quite familiar with the shape and everything, but there's a lot of differences of this compared to the wireless version out there. So I'm gonna pull you down to my top down, and we're gonna cover everything about this mouse. Where you have to start is, well, with the wire. That's, again, how we're getting our 8,000 polar rate, but more importantly, the wire itself is just, I, I, don't, I don't know, a wire's a stinking wire these days, you know what I mean? But I mean, just look at this. I've been using the beans out of this mouse and this thing is a straight up stiffy here. Like it's even holding this bend right here, you know? If you flop it around, bam, that bend is still right there. Now I do got me a bungee up behind my monitor and it makes it definitely much more manageable. But at the end of the day, this day and age with wireless mice being what we all want, a wire, again, is a wire, and straight up, it sucks. All right, all right, slow down, slow down. We're not throwing out the mouse just because it has a wire. We still have a lot more to cover here. And believe it or not, one of the biggest differentiating factors of this compared to, say, the wireless version is the coating, which you probably can't even see. Looking top down, maybe a little bit, because you can see a little bit more gloss shining off right here. Now, if I pull this up right here, you can probably see it much better. It is super smooth. Just look at the coating. That's all I want you to look at is the coating here, right there, perfectly. Bam, sliding right off, super smooth, okay? Now keep that in your mind. Now let's go and look at the V3 Pro, the wireless version. Just look at the texture within it. You can see where the light is reflecting off. We're gonna go right to that side, bam. Now, this is where I want you to focus. You see the texture? You see my thumb grip? I've used the beans out of this mouse, and you can see that texture fading away right there. And believe it or not, right here where it's fading away and it's shiny, that is how the wired version actually feels. It is a little bit slicker in the hand. When you come to this one over here, you kind of got that ABS, double shot ABS keycap feeling over here. Not so much PBT because it's not that grainy, but again, ABS keycap. Many as might be thinking Zowie coding type style. And I don't even know if I'd go that way. I would say the Zowie feels a little bit more like a pure plastic, if that makes sense. It's mild, okay? It's mild, but the Zowie feels more like a pure plastic. When again, I come over here to the death that it feels kind of like a coating of paint. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, they're both very smooth, but this feels like a coating of paint when this feels like a pure piece of plastic. When I come over here to how about this one, the uh, Logitech G Pro Super Light, that's pretty much what it feels like. It's like that combo of plastic and paint in between. I would say if anything, it is close to the G Pro Super Light texture exactly in the hand. That is what it feels like now. As you can see, I have grips on my G Pro Superlight because that texture, for me at least, is a little slick. When I get into those heated moments or I'm gaming for a long session, my hands get a little sweaty, they're sliding around, hence the reason I had to go grips on my G Pro Superlight. So as far as the coating, I think we have two issues or concerns. Again, at least for me, may not be for you at all. Number one being, well, this is the first Razer mouse I wish they would have put grips in. I wish they would have included grips nuts. They've been really good including that with a lot of their mice out there. I wish they would have included it here because this is again a slick coating. Number two, is it better to have this coating than the texture one? Because as you saw right here, well, it's wearing away on mine. Even on one and two, the textured coating on my V3 Pro is wearing away. And again, I've used this mouse since it has come out. So maybe a pro or a con, 
Not sure yet. I'll have to use this a lot more to see if it starts wearing out. Next up is the weight, and the weight is reduced on us. Let's slap it on a scale. I got my wire just sitting there. Nothing crazy or anything. We are getting 57.1 grams, and I just want to compare that up to, again, the wireless one. We are getting 61.8 grams. Now, let's be honest here. That is super cool seeing a wireless mouse come in that lightweight compared to, again, a wired mouse. Now, tweak in the cable, put it in your bungee. You might be able to reduce a little bit of that, but no matter what, it's always there just dangling around. All right, so now I wanna talk about me actually using a mouse, right? We talked about how we have the 8K, we got the Gen 3 optical switches, we got that 30K sensor right down here. By the way, your DPI button is on the bottom. Same as we saw over here on the V3 Pro, your feet exact same as well. And again, you can see right there. So, so anyways, talking about the mouse, Again, it's packing the features and the specs that we're seeing on the higher end $150 mouse coming over here to this guy, you know what I mean? And, and that's really nice to see. The shape, we're all familiar with it coming from the V3. If you want, I'll slap up dimensions right here so you can take a quick glance of Rue at him. But again, we're all quite familiar with that. And it is a fantastic shape. I would say pretty darn close to the best shape, if not the best shape I have ever felt. I love it being an Ergo fan. It is a dream mouse. If I was to create a mouse, this would honestly be it, right? Some of you might be thinking the EC, Zowie EC. Well, it's just a clone of that. Uh, honestly, it's not. Go watch my main review. It's very close. Very, very close, actually. But again, some of these curves sw uh, swell out a little bit more on the Zowie, definitely on the back or on the inside. Over here, it's definitely more ergonomic friendly. It's definitely user friendly. It's not really bonking you or holding a position within your hand. You can pull it out, flick and dip, and really pull it back into there. It's a safe ergo mouse, which you don't see too often. Usually you see dramatic ergo mice that's just gonna fit a shape, a hand shape here or there, you know what I mean? Which, me being a massive Zowie EC fan, this is, again, a dream shape. Now, as far as the button feel on this mouse, it is snappy and right to the point. If you use the V3 Pro, very similar there. Let me give you a quick listen and go in and watch the play of the buttons. As you see in just about no play whatsoever after I click and press down, Almost none whatsoever, but man, they sure do bounce back up on you. Again, this is a lot newer compared to the one I've used a whole bunch, but they bounce up at you really quick. Now, let me give you a quick comparison of a very well used V3 Pro. significantly more button and uh, play right there. Look at that one. Click, and then we have all that excess play. On the one, click, excess play. Let me bring it back here to the wired version. Click, and it's practically right down. On two, bam, pretty much right down. I mean, that is awesome. And that's not just something over time of use. That's out of the box how this is right there. Massive improvement scroll wheel. Feels pretty much the exact same. This one is a little bit louder, but that's again because it hasn't been used as much as this one over here. Side buttons feel the exact same. So looking at the comparison of one and two right there, again, we can't use the, oh, hey, well, this one's been used a whole lot more than this one. This one's still new. That, that's not the case because something like that doesn't happen over time when you're using a mouse, right? And looking at that play right there, it is a significant difference and this feels so much better, it really does. Now, one concern I do have talking about using one longer than the other is you all know, I've done my follow-up video on the V3 Pro here. This one and the one I have over there on my work desk, the white one. I get side play now. Out of the box, it was solid. But now I get side play. It's nothing deal breaking, nothing like, uh, it's nothing horrible, but I notice it. Heck, I even notice it on my work computer whenever they're just editing videos. I feel that slight creak and I hear it here and there. It's just annoying. And it's even more annoying because it's a $150 mouse. Like, sheesh, our $150 product shouldn't be doing that, you know? Again, this one being a lot newer, even though I've used the beans out of it here, I have not used it nearly as long as the V3 Pro. I can tell you right now, it is rock solid. I don't have a single creak, a single rattle, nothing on this mouse, but over time, like we saw with the V3 Pro, we're gonna have to see how it fares. But out of the box, rock solid. 
All right, so let, let, let's go to talk about it here. You know what we got to talk about. We got to talk about that 8K polling rate, okay? It is, oh man, there's so much that goes into play with this, right? Number one, we talked about the shape. We talked about the cable being attached. We talked about the feel and the performance in the hand with the sensor and stuff. And now we're talking about the AK. But everything back here goes into that AK. Why does it? Because AK is, again, the response of the mouse going to your PC. And I've stated this so much before, guys. You mind if I take my hat off for this one? Because this is going to get hot and heated here, okay? All of that stuff. There's so much that goes into play to something like that being AK. You know what I mean? To get that performance. Your internet. How's your internet? How's your ping? Right? What else is playing in your room? You got your everyone else in your room playing some Netflix or using this device and that, you know what I mean? And then you're over here worried about your AK. Uh, yeah, you know, there's so much other stuff that's got to go into it, you know what I mean, to really get that performance. How's your PC? How's it built? What other stuff is running in the background? Can it, can it uh, handle that performance? What game are you playing? You know what I mean? And again, I go back into that cable weight right there because you're going to feel that. That's going to put a little bit of drag on you. How much of that 8K is it going to take away? Like, holy stinking schmoly. Let me put my hat back on now that I got over that high heated section right there, okay? But talking about that, guys, like, like no joke, it, it, it's... It's something as a tech nerd, as a peripheral fan yourself, if you're here watching this, it's kind of like, yo, if we got it, why not use it? That's how I've always been. Like, I love tech, so I want the best that's out there. And that's what I get right here. Is it something I notice? No, it, it, it honestly doesn't. I'm sorry. And if someone says they do, uh, yeah, yeah. They're gonna have to show you some stinking graph with some numbers and dots and everything doing this, that, or the other. <laughs> Visually, in the hand of your performance, like, don't, don't be full of baloney here, okay? Don't be full of baloney. <laughs> Going from, again, using the V3 Pro and then to the Zowie, which I've been using the heck, and then coming over to this, I'm sorry. I didn't notice a single difference. Now, what I did notice a difference talking about that not being AK polar rate, but the slightly lighter weight being a very big ergo mouse, I noticed just the performance being very natural and where that also came into play hold on a second is me still using this new razor what is this called the black widow v4 pro lo and behold 8k polling right here as well right so i'm just the best gamer on the planet right now all of my stuff's lickety split what played into play here played into play what played into account here is the lighter weight of this ergo mouse and again me using a massively obnoxiously sized full-size keyboard here again I never caught myself whacking into my keyboard because it was so light I felt like I can flick and dip it a whole lot more and that was nice that was very very nice again me using the uh, Zowie over here which is a lofty ergo mouse again for this day and age I felt myself having to fling it just a little bit more rather than flicking and dip it and I did hit the side of my keyboard a little more I love this keyboard I don't want to get rid of it and that's what really shined here that's what really shined you do notice the slightly lighter weight of this mouse in the hand. And again, that combination, it just feels, again, truly natural, like an extension of your hand while you're gaming. But come on, guys, here, let's not tug on each other's titties here, right? 8K polling rate, it's cool, it's awesome to say you got it, but do we really notice a difference? Again, it's just brainwashed us all along with myself and I stink and love it. But I don't know why. Kinda how I feel about my ex-girlfriend. Now I think I saved the best for last. I say I think because I'm gonna need your guys' help here, okay? This mouse comes in at 70 bucks. It's wired. Is that a good deal? Packing some sweet specs, the eight K, right? The great sensor, the great switches, the amazing shape, 70 bucks, okay? Half the price of the wired, uh, the wireless one over here. You can get a solid wired mouse for 50 bucks or under these days. An absolutely phenomenal mouse. The one and only thing that would separate this from any other wired mouse for me is going to be the shape. Anything else in it, I think is minute differences. What you can notice if you're a tech fan and you just want the best of the best that's out right now, this has it. And that's what's going to justify it for you. But at the end of the day, it's a $70 wired mouse, which is just absolutely mind-blowing this day and age, I honestly think. Me personally, I would say save up the money and get the wireless one if they fixed the flex. But anyways, there we go. My review of the new Razer Death Adder V3 wired 8K polling raid version here. I hope I was to help you out. If I was not, make sure to go replay this video on eight times speed and it might be able to help you out a little bit better showing you how fast this mouse can absolutely be. Absolutely focus focus on 8K right there. Holy smokes. I hope I didn't put a ding in my wall over there. Thank you so much for stopping by. Subscribe.
It's Bell. Catch you in the next one. Bye now.